Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian, it's my kitchen table we're doing modelling. So what have we got for you today? Well, if you look over my right shoulder, you'll see a new kit from Tacom. It's the M60A1 with explosive reactive armour and the M9 dozer blade. A really eagerly anticipated kit, I think, from quite a lot of modellers that like to model the uh, Cold War uh, US Army uh, main battle tanks. It's an interesting kit. It's spanned many, many years of operational service and it's the first time that you've been able to get the m 601 with explosive reactive armor and the M9 dozer blade in the same kit. Now, many years ago, I did build the venerable Tamiya kit and all its failings uh, with the addition of the Academy, um, the M9 dozer blade, which I was happy with, but I had to do a lot of scratch building on the back to make the oil reservoir pumps and all the pipe work. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much more is included in this kit to make it a more complete build. Um, I know Legend Productions also do a resin um, extra set with the M9 dozer blade that can fit on the M60 series of tanks, which I do have one stowed away in the stash. And that's quite a complete kit as well, including all the rear ancillary kit, which the Academy kit doesn't have. It just is the dozer blade to go in the front. So I'm really interested to see if everything is in the box to do the, the complete dozer system from pump right through to the blade on the front. So enough waffling from me, let's get the box on the table and see what's inside. Oh, so we're on the table and what can we say? Well, as always, first off box art, it sells the kit and this doesn't let you down. It's a beautiful box art, although the box is a little bit squished because it has come from the Far East. So hopefully the kit's inside is okay. Um, it's got in action, possibly, you know, circa 1991 in, in the Gulf region, punching through a berm as uh, there's actually quite a famous photograph of this very tank or a tank of this type doing this very thing, punching through a berm on the advance, probably into Kuwait or something like that. Anyway, so let's have a look at the box. So all hatches can be built in the open or closed position. Detailed static display model, PE parts, clear parts included, great. Four types of markings and one piece tracks. Mm. Well, we'll have to see how they are. Not a toy. Uh, cement not included. Uh, model may vary from version box, but all the usual sort of non, uh, uh, stuff. Ready to assemble kit intended for collectors aged 14 years and over. Kit number 2142. And if we look on the side, got some all, this is all Desert Storm 1991. Um, all in the US Sangre, apart from this one here which is the USMC. So you, they're all United States Marine Corps tanks. Three of them are the Sangre, and this one is the Sangre sort of dark earth and black camouflage, which looks really, really interesting. And maybe the camouflage scheme I'll do when I build this. So, uh, 2021 20, from Tacom, copyright. You've got the old thing on the side there, MIG ammo color, which is usual for Tacom. Same picture on the end, quite a plain box really. And then we've got, on this side, we've got a, a parts layout, which actually doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. There's not just too many sprues. Got a bit of PE and a decal sheet. And then same on this end. So let's go and see what the damage is like. Hopefully we're gonna be okay. Lift the lid off and I think we're okay. Now, thankfully, Tacom have got this double folded stiff card on the box. And it's protected it from its journey through the international postal system, which is fantastic. Box is deep and it's jammed full of plastic. So let me set it to one side and then we'll get the parts out as we go. Uh, I'll dig down and we'll get the instructions. So the instructions come in a nice plastic envelope with the PE and decals and a couple of pins. So let's open it up and see what is inside. Yeah, catch the lip. Now I have to say I like the way tack on package stuff because it's in, all in resealable bags including the sprues um, which makes it so much easier to, to look through. So we've got a bit of copper cabling for tow cables which is fantastic. Far better as any rope stuff you get with the old Tamiya kits. Uh, set that to one side. We have PE for the rear stowage basket or the bustle. Beautiful PE. Very thin. 
Uh, very few connection points and what connection points are they're really really fine so they're going to be so easy to remove and clean up and add on excellent decals we'll have a quick look at them and then we'll get into the instructions proper so decals let me get that to focus there we go with a light on them they're lovely quite thin nicely matte as well not overly gloss all in register, they're going to be very easy to use. Even with Bart Simpson on there. Very good. Okay, and then I'm assuming if they're one piece tracks, these may well be track pins to join the tracks, which is going to be brilliant if that's the case. Right, and a lovely line drawing. Now, if you want to have, pause it, you can, if it'll focus, there we go. You can read at your leisure. So, starting off with basic info and then onto the sprue layout. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. If I can figure out how to zoom in. Right, anyway, we'll just hold it up to the camera. So, same on the side of the box, we've got the parts layout. And then step one, so we have holes to drill out in the front glasses plate. Uh, and then we're putting the ancillary parts on. Now straight away, looking at this drawing, looks to be an awful lot more hull detail on than what was on the old Tamiya kits or Academy kits. So I don't know what Dragon kits are like. I've certainly built Tamiya and Dragon M60 type tanks. Their holes are nowhere near as detailed as that. So that's a real promising start. Got some uh, shock absorbers for the axle arms. Putting on the final drive units for part three. Well, part three is making the final drive. Part four is putting together light units and tow hooks for the rear of the hull. And then that's assembling it all onto the hull. Nice, simple construction steps. Then we've got making up the suspension arms for the road wheels with the shock absorbers. So you've got I, J, K and L, P, O, N and M. So you need to be careful when you're doing this not to get them muddled up because they will only go in a certain way on the tank. Um, but it's all very clearly laid out, very easy to follow, not too cluttered, so it shouldn't be a problem. Moving on to the road wheels. So you've got separate rubbers from the steel inners, which is fine. And same there, you've got a rim and you've got a choice. So you've got two types of wheel, whatever you want to build for the particular tank you're building. Rear drive sprockets. And these possibly look like the return rollers to go on the top. And the idler wheel usually is the same as the road wheel on these tanks. So that makes it even easier. As long as you don't get them muddled up. Right, so that would be the undercarriage finished. Or the hull, lower hull finished. Then we're moving on to the top hull. So you've got a fire extinguisher. You've got the viewing ports. And then the slide-in hatch arrangement for this tank. So it popped up and then slid to one side for the driver to get in and out. Holes to drill, probably for the reactive armor to go on. And then the ancillary sundries going on the front. So you've got your lights, your towing eyes, and um, other odds and ends. All made up on the sides and then going on to the hull. That looks really good. Um, other little bits and pieces. Gun mount, or travel, travel lock as it's properly called. And then you're looking on the rear deck with the ventilation, louver panels and exhausts. And this is the raised exhaust if I'm right. I don't think it's an air intake, it's an exhaust. Hole going on to the low, top hole going on to the lower hole. And then tracks going on. And as I thought, you've got two rubber band tracks, which in the picture they look really detailed. We'll see how they are in real life. And then pins to join them, which is really, really good. So there's no staples or melting tracks or anything like that. It should hopefully join together and be a good, strong, firm fit. So moving on to the track guards. Uh, track guard support brackets and then moving on to stowage boxes and these will be the air intakes and then this looks like the pump assembly which I had to scratch build on my tank so if we look at this here is my tank and you can see on the rear here I scratch built this pump assembly from photographs so it does look like we do have what's needed to make the whole system properly and there we go so 
track guards going on for part 13 pipe work going in and then moving on to light guards and for part 15 which I scratch built the game myself is the pipe work on the lower hull and obviously you can see how old this kit is because it's still got the motorization parts in that I never filled in nobody ever looks under my tank so it doesn't really matter so that looks really really detailed so you've got all the fastening brackets you've got the joints and the pipe work and the protective sleeve so it's far far more detailed than any other kit that's been produced like this um, moving forward to the front hydraulic distribution box possibly no expert on this vehicle but I, you know reasonably well versed around armor and then this is building up the hydraulic ram system for raising and lowering the dozer blade uh, then we're moving on to more of the mechanism for the dozer blade to fasten to and then finally in part 19 we're making the main arms for the dozer blade so you've probably got upper arms and lower arms and then I'd imagine part 20 you are looking at constructing the dozer blade itself looks very detailed and going on so it's going to be quite a complicated construction it's not going to be an easy build However, it's a really, really detailed build in the instructions. If the kit marries up to what the instructions are, it looks really, really good. So you finish the lower hull dozer blade, you're then moving on to other ancillaries. So that's a heater exhaust. And then you start working with this explosive reactive armor. And each of them have got their individual support brackets to go on to the respective parts of the hull and turret, which again is a step up from what the Academy and the Tammy kit was, because it was just pegs on the back of the armor panels. So lots of drilling in the turret for part 24 for putting on the ERA and then you've got the rangefinder going on the side ancillaries for the turret, hatches, commander's viewport uh, moving on to the 50 cal for the commander's coupler all going together and then going on to the turret and then moving on to the rear turret bustle So that's your plastic frame and PE netting, which will work really, really nicely. It seems to be quite common with a lot of the old tank bustles nowadays that have got um, wire, for, wire netting in them. It's usually PE for the netting and then plastic for the parts. Take your time, clean them up properly. They'll likely be quite fragile, so don't hammer at them. Get a nice fine pair of sprue cuts to get them off and they'll be okay. Moving on to turret going on top, going on to turret bottom. Uh, making up the gun mantlet, mantlet gun, fume extractor, more PE, uh, ERA panels, and then adding it to the turret, and then there's a p piece of PE for the the bolt-on cover that kept the canvas mantlet cover in place. 29, more ERA panels, 30, more ERA panels, smokes discharg discharges, and more ERA panels. So there was quite a few on this tank nearly there and then the final bit in construction if I can get the pages to turn oh, more ERA panels there we go and then we join the hull, turret to the hull and that's construction complete wow <laughs> that's 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 a that's going to be a challenging build it, it should be okay but it's going to be a challenge it's not something you're going to hash together you need to take your time and get it right get the fit right and you should be all right so you've got painting guide all done with MIG ammo, but you can use any colors you like as long as it matches. These things faded really quickly. They got grimy really quickly. So once you've weathered them up, it doesn't matter. Just use the paints you're happy to use. So I can't read the writing very well because it's quite white on gray, but you've got Company C, 2nd Tank Battalion, USMC. So that's 1991. You've got Company A, 8th Tank. Battalion, USMC, you have got Company C, 8th Tank Battalion, USMC, and then the final one with the three-tone camo is Company C, 3rd Tank Battalion, USMC. Now this one, you'll need to paint the tank with the camouflage scheme, paint the ERA separate desert colour, and then fasten on. And if you look at this, even there, there's some green in amongst the ERA, so they're obviously replacement panels, and that's a really good thing to do is if you want to add a bit of variation to the kit, is, 
it, it's put green panels on because then it looks like it's had a bit of battle damage and been repaired in the field with stuff that's been you know, shipped straight out to the States and it's not been desert sanded. Just adds a bit of variety to the tank and more detail and draws the eye in. Looks fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Well, great instructions. Let's have a look at the parts. So we may as well jump straight in. This is on the side. We've got the lower hull and tracks. Let's get the tracks out. Nicely packaged. Nicely moulded tracks. Actually quite impressed here. The detail is really nice. There's very few sink marks. No ejector pins. They all seem to be on these side pieces here. And let's have a look how they marry together. They fit together quite well. And they've got a defined pinhole in them. So I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I'm quite impressed. Now, these things were under constant tension. They were called live tracks. So they, they was very little sag in them. So using these tracks isn't going to be a problem for me. There are a myriad of, of aftermarkets like Fruel Model or you know Master Track or whatever that you can get white metal tracks for this. But when I build this, I'll just be using these tracks because I think they're good enough. And once you get them weathered up, you know, paint them, paint them a little right. Now, lower hull. Um, looking at this, I can tell you straight away, it is worlds apart from the time you're offering. There we go. Look at the detail on that. You've got all this beautiful, crisp, sharp. You can feel it with your fingers. It's really sharp, punchy bolt detail. So that is going to take washes, dry brushing, weathering beautifully. Um, beautiful weld seams here and around where you're going to put your ancillary parts. A little bit flashy, there is um, mold seam released because this is obviously slide molded technology here. Um, so there is a little bit of parting lines, which to be fair, a scrape of the scalpel blade and then a little bit of Mr. Surfacer uh, 1200 stippled on to recreate the cast texture because these holes were cast. Um, it, it, you're never going to see it. Beautiful. Now the Tamiya holes used to have a join line along here that were an absolute pain in the behind to deal with and then of course because they were all designed for running technology the big gaps around here so we can you can look at this hole here if I can get the light on it uh, you've got the little join which I filled and I filled a lot of the holes there um, but it doesn't if we turn it over without losing these guys uh, lost them if you look at the mold detail on here compared to here worlds apart you can see what 30 years of technology is done with regards to improving the quality of, and detail of a kit. Really, really happy with that. That's a fantastic part. And to get it molded where you've actually got a recess in there and to get the mold to release is, is something else. The mold technology is brilliant. Fantastic lower hole part. Absolutely amazed. Right, next part we have got is the gun and the mantlet. Should have really debagged a lot of this first, but never mind. You're seeing it as I see it. I've, first time I've looked at this kit. Again, beautiful, beautiful detail. We've got on the end of this is a former for the PE parts to bend them into shape. Uh, you've got the mantlet sides, so it looks like you have a little fine time fine joint to deal with, but you shouldn't be able to see it. Mantlet front, and then a one-piece gun that's been slide molded with a hollow barrel. Fantastic. Really, really impressed with that, and no burr line seaming down the side of it where the joint, the, the molds have come apart, and and this um, part here is in fantastic detail. Fume extractor to put on, and a few ancillary parts. Brilliant. Clear parts. I'm not going to get them out. They are absolutely crystal clear. To be fair, probably not going to see much through them anyway. But a little bit of Tamiya blue or whatever colour that takes your fancy. And you're going to have lovely clear parts. Right, ERA. This is Sprue J. I can find the opening for the bag, it's here. Absolutely stunning detail. 
I have to say, Tacom, any Tacom kit I've seen, I've got one or two, not many, but the detail is brilliant. The bolts are really sharp, you can really feel it, the panel lines are crisp and even, deep enough to represent individual panels, and then you've got, oh dear, look at all this, all these fastening points for the ERA, so you really are going to need to get a pair of fine um, sprue cutters to get this, but the sprue attachment points aren't huge, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, one or two breakages here. And no wonder with the amount of squishing my box has had, so I need to be careful with that. I'll probably just glue that one back on with a little bit of extra thin before I put it back in the bag. But yeah, lovely parts. All right, so moving on from that sprue, we're on to sprue N. And this is just bits and pieces. If I can get it taken open. So we have got um, some road wheels and we've got the rear turret bustle here really finely molded. So again, real gently taken off the sprue so you don't break anything. We've got some grab handles, some lovely fuel tanks, with beautiful detail on it. And then we've got the mantlet cover for the 50 cal on the commander's cupola. Beautiful, beautiful parts. There's the 50 cal barrel and it's slide molded with a hollow end. I don't know if you can see that. Fantastic stuff. Right, um, sprue R and it is just a small piece of ERA. I'm not even going to bother getting out the bag, but it's the same as the rest of them. Beautiful relief detail, nicely delicate panel lines and even the bolt detail on the fastening structure is amazing. If you can see that. Right, next sprue, double sprue of road wheels, this is sprue R, again, right, I should have said that this plastic is, it's not the real hard crisp plastic you'll get in Hasagara or something like or Tamiya kits, but it's still firm, but it moulds so, so nice. You look at the road wheels, look at the detail on the road wheels. All the bolt patterns is there. You've even got recessed bolts on the on the outer rim there. Separate tires, your return rollers, lifting eyes. Tacom always impress when it comes to their molding skills. I'm always impressed by the kits. Um, maybe I should look more into them. Right, we have the upper hull. I know I've said this a lot about this kit, but this is stunning, stunning molding technology. I don't know if you can catch that in the light, but can you see the cast, the, the rolled steel metal that's on that? That's absolutely stunning. Super fine louver grills. Handles that look like they're kind of proper recessed as if they're a round bar rather, it's just molded flat into it. Beautiful bolt detail. Look at the front hole plating. Front classics where the driver is again, beautiful casting rolled steel, whatever it is. I'm not sure if the whole top was, I think maybe it was a whole piece, cast, one piece cast hole, but absolutely stunning, stunning detail. Really, really impressed with that. And then we've got a couple of the side locker covers again, beautiful detail, beautiful bolt detail. And this will be the bottom parts of it. Yeah, really impressed. Tacom is going well, well up my list of go-to armour builders. And to be fair with Tacom, they do have a really wide selection of armour kits. Right, turret, upper. Casting marks in the turret. Beautiful cast detail. You're really not going to have to render it too much. You could always go over it again if you want to make it more pronounced, but I'll be building this straight out of the box. Commander's coupler, again. Beautiful, beautiful detailing on it. Rear louver grill, lovely fine detail on that. A couple of hatches here, brilliant detail, and the exhaust. Yeah, quite impressed, quite impressed indeed. Right, so we have another double sprue here with the different set of road wheels and the drive wheels, so it's quite. It doesn't look like a lot, there is actually quite a number of sprues here. I'll just take one out of the bag because we're going to need one. Seems it's a double sprue. 
Right, wheels. So this is the other option of wheels. Again, beautiful detail. Bolt rendering absolutely spot on. We've got bolt detail on the reverse of the wheels. You're not actually going to see them, but it's there. Uh, no flash whatsoever. No burring whatsoever. There's your suspension arms here and here. Um, that's part of the suspension system. Absolutely stunning bolt detail. We've got the outer drive sprockets and the inner drive sprockets there. Yeah, I'm very, very impressed. And then this is the obviously the, the, the inner of the drive wheel. I don't know if you can see that, but right down deep in there, you've got the bolt detail as well for the fastening to the drive. Absolutely stunning. Final drives. Yeah, really, really good. High quality injection molding. Right, we're now moving on to screw W, and this looks start to be parts for the dozer blade attachment. Again, yeah, it's good quality plastic. The other thing is, there's, there's, there's no much mold release on this, so it's clean. Um, so you've got lower arms. Uh, you've got the parts for the hydraulic rams here. Lots and lots of small, fine detail parts. Absolutely stunning. On the reverse, there is ejector pin marks, and there's a few of these pieces here that will just break off. May, may, need to make sure they're cleanable so they don't foul the fit. But absolutely stunning detail. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing with this kit. Really quite impressed. And this is one of the focal points, this screw here. So this is screw U. And this will be the dozer blade itself. So there's the rear of the dozer blade, not an ejector pin in sight. There's the front of the dozer blade, not an ejector pin in sight. And then we've got the front actual hard hardened steel part of the blade and the ripper part of the blade, I'm assuming. Part of the rear fender that the pump assembly goes on. All the lower pipe work goes under the hull. And these look to be parts. There's the protection parts. These look to be parts of the pump itself. One or two ejector pin marks. Are you going to see them? No, you're not. They're all out of the way. Brilliant. Take note, Tamiya. <laughs> They're pretty bad with the ejector pins. They're getting better, but they still do put a few, few faux pas in. This molding is stunning. I mean, I know it's a word I've used a lot, but it really is what needs to be said. The quality of the mold... It's all flash free, it's burr free. Cleanup is going to be so, so minimal. If you look at these pipes, there's no burring down the side of the pipes where the molds have released. Absolutely cracking. Right, we are nearly there. Uh, screw G. This is going to be another mammoth review, but then it's a mammoth kit. These are the all important track guards. Fantastic detail. Now I'm assuming you will have to remove this portion of the track guard here and replace it with what was on the, the, the previous sprue so you can get the, the pump assembly on it. So this will just be a generic M60 uh, sprue part. Um, we've got some of the shock absorber assemblies here. If I can get it in frame down there. And then we've got the rear louver doors here. Um, and one or two, these are all sort of rear protection parts, uh, front driver's hatch, front of the track guards with the rubber sort of mud guard at the front, and we've got the the fastening track guards strengtheners and attaches to the hull, which are beautifully rendered. Not an ejector pin in sight unless it's under the driver's hatch, but you're not going to see that because it doesn't flip up, it slides over. One or two pieces like this here we'll need to watch out for. Just break off. So, a bit of attention to clean up. It's really not a problem. I mean, you're going to have to knock them off, the, and that's all you're going to have to do. Note here, there's some really fine grab handles on the rear louvered covers for the rear hull. You need to be very careful you don't knock them during the construction. But look at the, the finesse that's been done with them. You wouldn't even get a, as good a result if you replaced them with your own wire or a piece of foot wedge. Yeah, stunning. Absolutely stunning. And finally, we have Sprue K. Now, I'm not actually going to take this out. It is just 
more attachment points for the ERA. Um, yeah, and a, an ERA panels, a track guard, strengthener, stroke attacher. Uh, that looks to be part, look possibly for the toe in pintle on the back of the hull. And then we've got the tow cables ends here, uh, really rather nicely hollow. It's all slime molded, as well as the cabin heater exhaust, slide molded with a hollow end. Stunning parts, stunning moldings. Well, there we go. Whew, what a pile of plastic. Um, let's get it all back in the box, get the camera back on me, and we can, we can sum up with my thoughts. So there we are. Uh, TACOMS M60 A1 with explosive reactive armor and the M9 dozer blade. Right, thoughts. Whew. What can I say? There's quite a few things I could say. Um, first of all, it's a complete kit. So where I said on the old one I built, I had to scratch build the pump and the, the, few, the hydraulic line delivery system under the hull. This one, it's all there, including the fixing brackets and the protection sleeves and everything. It's all there. It's a complete kit of this particular vehicle. So it's fantastic in that respect. The quality of the molding is absolutely stunning. Now I've said that right through the video. The word is the best word to use, to use for this kit. Stunning quality plastic, it's really good, keeps its detail. The molding is stunning, there's no burring, there's no flash. There's a lot of small detail parts that are beautifully molded. To be fair, you're not actually going to see a lot of the, the, the fastening parts of the ERA panels, but it's there, you know it's there. It's going to take a little time to put together, but the detail is absolutely top draw detail. Really, really good, and it cocks. It knocks the, the old Tami and Academy kits into a cocked hat. It really does. They're showing their age. They're great kits, don't get me wrong. They're great kits, certainly for beginners. They're easy to construct. And they look, you know, it looks like an M60. But when you actually get down to the finer details, this is leagues ahead. Um, really, really impressed. Uh, Price-wise, um, it's retailing for about, what, between 40 and 55 pounds, I think. Maybe a little bit 60 pounds in the UK. Um, so shop around, you'll get a bargain. Um, is it worth the money? Wholeheartedly, yes. If you look at the amount of construction you've got, if you're a modeler that loves construction, rather as painting, this is the right kit for you. It's going to take time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge you, it's going to be a really, really interesting build. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, if you like painting and detail work over construction, okay, get the construction by with, and then get onto the painting, this is still a really interesting model. And there's different options there. You can have the overall sand color, or you can have three-tone camouflage with the sand color uh, ERA panels, or you can have the sand color ERA panels with NATO green panels that have been replaced. And we're not even talking the different detail sets you can get for the M60 series of tanks. There's loads and loads of extra uh, aftermarket detail sets you can get for tanks of this type. So uh, yeah, I think it's it's value for money. It's it's a fantastically molded kit, and Tacom have got a reputation for building up to being easy, good builds. So wholeheartedly recommended. Um, so there we go, that's the M60 A1 with ERA and the Dem9 Dozer Blade. Um, if you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any questions at all, put them down below. I always, always read every question and I put a reply and I'm grateful for people taking the time to put questions and, and watch my videos. Um, yeah, so until next time guys, happy modeling and take care.